We're gonna sit down and we're gonna listen, and when you hear the word switch, when I hear when you hear me say the word switch, we're gonna stand up, switch seats, and then sit back down again. Okay? Are you ready? Switch. I like red. Hi, my name is Gemma Perry and welcome to Mooncake, where ESL teaching is made easy. If you're new here, then you need to know that I make weekly ESL teaching tip videos to help you improve your English teaching. So if you are teaching ESL online or abroad, make sure you subscribe below and hit that notification bell for weekly ESL teaching tips. Also, real quick, if you are new here, say hi in the comments below and let me know where in the world you're teaching. ESL games can be a fantastic tool to get your students practicing newly taught English. But one question that I get asked often is how to explain these games to students with a low level of English. But Gemma, they don't understand. So today I want to share some tips that I use with my students when introducing a new game to help make sure that the instructions are clear. So without further ado, let's get started. Now, one mistake that a lot of teachers will make is to try and explain the rules or the steps of a game all at once. Now, depending on a student's age, even in their native language, it can be challenging for them to remember and follow different steps. For example, a three to four year old would only be able to follow one or two steps at a time, whereas a four to five year old should be able to remember three or four steps at a time. So in a second language, it's even more challenging for students to understand and remember instructions that you're giving them. So our first task is to think about the game that we want to play and break it down into easy to follow steps. For example, let's take the game of Switch, which is a simple game where students are seated in seats and when they hear the word switch, they need to stand up and switch seats with a friend. Only you remove one chair, so one student is left standing and that student needs to answer a question. This game can be split into three simple steps. The first is to sit down and listen to your teacher. The second is to keep listening and be ready. And lastly, when you hear the word switch, stand up and switch seats. We then need to introduce these steps to students one by one rather than all at once. But to do this, we really need to limit the language that we're using to introduce those steps. If we use too much language or too many words to try and explain each step, then students aren't gonna be able to follow. So try to limit each step to four or five words so that you have key words or a key sentence to explain that step of the game. So for example, with our game of Switch, our three steps could be shortened to number one, sit down, number two, listen carefully, number three, stand up, switch, sit down. Now, as I mentioned, you don't want to introduce all the steps of a game all at once because this can be too much language for students to understand and too many steps for them to remember. So you want to introduce it step by step and demonstrate each step as you do. And you can do this with an assistant teacher or a pupil from the class. Once students are clear on that first step of the game, you can then introduce the second step, again using those key words or a key sentence to help them follow along. Once they're comfortable with the second step, you can then introduce the next step. But as you do, make sure you go back to the first step and repeat all the steps you've already introduced one more time. This helps again with repetition to help students put all these different steps together. In terms of translation, you shouldn't ever really need to translate the rules of games for students unless the game is really complicated. At which point I would really question whether or not that game is suitable for that class. That said, it's really important to remember that games are there to be used as a tool to help students practice language that we've been teaching them. So if you really can't get the instructions across, at that point I would then ask for some help translating. Most important thing is students know how to play so they can practice that new language. So there you have it, some tips to help you explain games to your students in a clear way that they can understand. If you like this video, then go ahead and hit that like button and comment with the word helpful in the comments below. If you're looking for more ESL teaching tips or game ideas, then make sure you check out some of my other videos right here. That's it for this video. Thanks so much for watching. You can find me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Or if you're looking for some teacher resources such as flashcards or PPT presentations, then make sure you check out the Mooncake English webpage linked below. Other than that, make sure you hit that subscribe button and notification bell for more weekly ESL teaching tips from Mooncake.